On this week's video fishing forecast, we have some reports of codfish on the South Shore reefs and wrecks. Striped bass are everywhere, especially schoolies, and bluefish have made a showing in our area. This and our correspondence from around Long Island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The May issue of The Fisherman is out now. Check out the Bluefish article by Ed Masunis. Tony Salerno has a great read on early season fluke. And have you ever wondered with all the jigs out there, which is the right one and when? Dave Pickering has the answer. The magazine is on its way to your mailbox now and can be viewed digitally at thefisherman.com. With a check of this weekend's weather, we have News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin. All right, thanks, Tim. Hey, meteorologist Rich Von Olin here at News 12 Long Island. Let's uh, check the weekend forecast, see what we got going on, and it looks like it's going to be a split decision. Uh, you know, this weekend, Saturday, probably going to be the not-so-nice day. I think Sunday is going to be a lot better. Water temps, you know, it's been chilly the last couple of weeks. I haven't warmed up too much, 40s and 50s. That water's still kind of cold. Saturday's going to be a little windy to start. Going to be gusting to like 10 or 20 and still left over 2 to 4, 4 to 7 out in the ocean. But notice how it moves away. Start to see things improve later Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. And I like Sunday. Looks nice, you know, 2 to 3, 2 to 4 feet as uh, the seas really calm down quite a bit. So Sunday, pick of the weekend. Future cast on Saturday, the winds, you know, north, northeast, uh, you know, kind of settling down late in the day. So if you're going to do something Saturday, afternoon should be better. And then going into Sunday, you know, the, the clouds move out, the winds drop out. Looks like a light and variable to northwest breeze, about 5 to 10. So that's going to be the pick of the weekend. And then a southwest breeze late in the day. Here's the high tides, uh, you know, early morning, very early on the south shore. It looks like, uh, you know, early to mid-morning across the north shore. So it looks like a split decision weekend. I like Sunday better. Hopefully you get some good fishing in. Tim, back to you. Be sure to check the latest weather before heading out on News 12. Now, let's check in with senior editor Fred Golifaro. Yeah, Tim. Uh, well, May's finally here. Uh, a lot of good fishing prospects coming up this month. And the weekend picture is actually looking pretty good. Uh, weather should be good. Maybe chance of showers Saturday morning, but the wind's not going to be bad. Uh, the ocean's going to be a little lumpy, but not going to affect those fishing in the bays and the sound. So uh, should be a good weekend. And temperature's up into the 60s, finally. Uh, there are plenty of small stripers around, uh, up and down the island. All the South Shore bays, the uh, North Shore bays and harbors, also along the ocean beaches. Uh, Savio Mizzi, again, a staff artist, he's been hitting it pretty good and catching a lot of fish, 24 to 26 inches on the East Hampton beaches. Bigger fish are still to the west, Raritan Bay, uh, Staten Island area, you know, being trolled on mojos and bunker spoons and uh, fish up to 40 pounds. Don't forget the slot uh, size limit is in effect. 28 to 35 inches, anything bigger goes back, anything smaller goes back. Uh, that's new this year. Uh, there are uh, porgies, and porgies are in the bays, I'm getting reports on them. Uh, also fluke are already around, season doesn't open till the 4th, and um, a lot of people anxious to kick that off. And uh, flounder, still not a lot to talk about as far as flounder go. Maybe May will be, be a little better as temperatures warm up a little. And uh, the inshore reefs, hey, some good cod fishing going on uh, for those that can get out and when they can get out. The cod and also blackfish, um, although black fishing ends today. Today's the last day for black, the spring blackfish season. But uh, surprisingly good uh, blackfish action compared to what we've had the last, uh, last spring. Uh, big issue now is, of course, you know, the uh, coronavirus and the closures going on. There's lots of businesses being hurt very badly by it. And, of course, one of them is our for hire industry. Uh, it so far hasn't been too bad because, quite honestly, you know, there haven't been a lot of fish around in our area anyway uh, that they would target, and the weather hasn't been very conducive to getting out. But now, they're really going to take a hammering now, Come coming into May and June, you know, the height of the season. Uh, so uh, they're, they've sent some proposals uh, to New York State, uh, Captree Boatman's Association among them, Tony Delernia, who's the New York rep to the Fisheries, uh, at uh, Mid-Atlantic Fisheries Management Council. And, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot... Uh, 
a lot of things that need to be addressed in order to open up uh, the, the fishery and open up the four hires. And they're addressing all those. They want to ensure the health and safety of their passengers and crew. That's first and foremost. And they feel like uh, by limiting the number of passengers on the boats and enforcing social distancing guidelines, the wearing of face masks, the coverings, etc., um, and you know the sanitizing of all common surfaces, they feel there's a way they can still sail. They can at least cover their bills. You know, they're not going to make a lot of money with limited passengers, at least until things open up again, but at least they can pay their bills and people can get out and do some fishing. Uh, again, uh, the state, uh, state parks, DEC, they keep encouraging people you know, to get involved in outdoor recreation. It's great mental health benefits with all the stress people are under these days. So uh, it, it would be nice if these guys can get, get out and get sailing. Uh, the um, next uh, opening it looks like is May 15th so hopefully something could happen by then uh, but certainly by the end of May it'd be nice if uh, these guys can get back in business and people can get out on those boats so we'll uh, we'll see what happens we, you know we just pray that this uh, COVID-19 threat uh, continues to diminish and we can all get back to doing the things we love to do most okay Tim back to you for you yakkers out there, the Fisherman's Kayak Clash is about to begin. Here is the New England editor, Toby Lipinski, with all the details. Thanks a lot, Tim. Yes, um, this Friday, May 1st, um, kicks off a brand new subscriber-only kayak fishing tournament, which we've been telling you about for the last couple of months, Fisherman Magazine's Coastal Kayak Clash. Now, this is a season-long, multi-species, subscriber-only kayak fishing tournament that is going to crown the best saltwater inshore kayak angler in the Northeast. Kicks off on May 1st, runs through November 31st. There's no additional fee to participate. You just got to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine, whether digital or print. Then head on over to the Fisherman Magazine's website, check on the Coastal Kayak Clash, register your account, sign in, and you are good to go to start fishing and head on down towards winning yourself a brand new Old Town Kayak. With his first report, we have Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. As you get to go and enjoy some fishing, take the time to go to any of your tackle shops and think about your charter boats. These are the guys that are really going to need help with this, especially the bigger party boats. Uh, maybe if you can find a little extra cash and get a gift card or uh, book a trip ahead of time, they'd appreciate it. In regards to the fishing here on the East End in Montauk and East Hampton, a lot of small schoolies, great fish for the kids. Uh, plenty of fish on the beach and in the bays and the size of the fish are getting bigger so fish up to 25 28 inches and there's a lot of bait activity on the beach from Chinnacock we have Mike Dean hope everyone's doing okay and uh, fishing dropped off a little bit this week kind of to be expected with the with the cold snap kind of funky weather Saturday was gorgeous got a couple of fish Nothing too great, mostly concentrated in the back bays using uh, like white bass assassins, paddle tails, small mag daughters, not too much of a top water bite, even though I thought the sun was really gonna warm things up enough for it. But, um, you know, we're kind of back to cloudy and uh, and cold. So we'll see, the bluefish and weak fish should be showing up uh, any time now. There were a number of boats out over the weekend I saw at the usual holes. Uh, didn't hear of any catches. Did hear of a couple of keeper blackfish taken off a few wrecks east of Shinnecock. Um, but not like really lights out fishing, just kind of happy to be on the boat and out on the water. Uh, really nice thing in the marinas, we're able to open back up. Let's keep all those charter guides and captains uh, in mind. Uh, can't hurt at all to book a trip, figure out the date when this is all over, leave a deposit. Definitely would be a welcome thing by these captains that have given us a lot of great fishing memories. So uh, expecting things to get a lot better, not just with fishing overall. Commerce is ahead. Take care, everyone. Talk to you next week. Kirk Fay has a great South Bay report. Thanks, Tim. Hey, everybody. Um, this is Kirk from Fish Gack. So far, I've been really concentrating local. Um, I've made it as far as um, the Robert Moses Bridge, but other than that, I've really been staying close to home, which, uh, which is Blue Point. Um, there's a lot of small bass um, in the bay, which is wonderful to see. I know a lot of us are waiting for those fish to move out of Raritan Bay and head our way. But as for now, there's nothing wrong going out and catching schoolies, especially when it's not a pick. 
I mean, you, you know, it's it's basically a fish on every cast. Um, no no secret in what to use. I mean, I'm a big Z-Man guy. I use a lot of Z-Mans. Half ounce jig head um, with just about anything Z-Man makes. And along with that, for years, I've been throwing my old standby, which is a six inch um, pearl swim shad. Um, the make I use is Tsunami. Um, so that's what I've been doing back here. I just got in actually. Um, and we had an excellent morning. The fish just kept biting um, through the tide. We probably had four hours of fish. So uh, if you get a chance, get on the water and grab some of those schoolies. And uh, I'm sure the big boys will be here soon. Captain Al Lorenzetti has the latest from Fire Island. Hey, Tim. Fire Island report. Uh, things are still happening. A little extra activity this past week here. I did a little cod fishing on a couple of wrecks offshore and had a nice bunch of fish. I had two keepers and about a dozen fish overall. And uh, it was fun. It was nice action. It's certainly great eating fish. I love to cook codfish. Uh, inside, you put down a chump path just about anywhere, and you're going to catch small striped bass. Maybe a keeper here or there. Ju just keep, you know, 28, 30 inches, something like that. But they're mostly small fish, 22, 24 inch average. And uh, so things are looking up. I expect to see the first bluefish show up here in a few days on the flats. And uh, that's about it for this week, there, Tim. So. Looks like Sunday's going to be a great day, too, so for inshore and offshore fishing, so keep that in mind. Talk to you next week, Tim. Marinas are open, and Kale's Family Boating Center is ready to get you out on the water. There's no better way to practice social distancing when with the family enjoying the outdoors. Check out a Pro powered by Suzuki. Low rates make it the perfect time to buy. Visit kalesfamilyboating.com for more information. With the fresh water and fly action, we have Paul McCain. The freshwater fishing has been really good. I mean, we the rivers are a little high, uh, both on Long Island and upstate, but on Long Island, where Spring Creek's fishing is good, the Carmage River, the Carls River, all catching fish. Um, it's uh, the salt water, <laughs> it's just stripers all over the island. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, out in Montauk, Tim O'Rourke, Captain Tim O'Rourke, He's reporting uh, fish on days he can get out. You know, it is windy out there. So uh, you do what you have to do when uh, he's been catching fish. Uh, I also would like to talk to Joey Pizza. Uh, he actually uh, got a fly rod for the first time, went out to a local area park, and he did very well. He caught his first striper of fly. Uh, I think he's the one that's hooked now. So get out there where you can. I'm just looking for the bluefish as soon as this weather calms down. From Oceanside, let's check in with Captain Joey Leggio and his new haircut. Uh, really not much to report with this COVID going around. It's hard to get out. Uh, I did go out one day with my buddy Paul, hit the local reefs, and uh, the cod fishing was very good. We had nine codfish. Also, we had a bunch of blackfish. Uh, back bays are lighting up. Using little bucktails like this little spur right here, tipped with some fat cow jig strips. Uh, there's plenty of bass around, you know, all schoolie size. Uh, and that's basically it. You know, hopefully we can get out soon. This COVID disappears and we can all get back to having a normal life. From Jamaica Bay, Joseph Ben Savenga has been catching schoolies in the back. He said less bunker, more rain bait and slower fishing this week. He also has been hitting some of the local back bays in the Oyster Bay area with bass assassins and has been picking away at some small schoolies. Now let's check in with Chris Ludwig. So this last week I decided to put the plugs down and do some chunking just to survey what's going on in the open beach. And in my opinion the best way to do that is with a piece of fresh bait. We've been using bunker and that hasn't been an issue to find because they're in the backwaters, they're in the inlets, they're on the open beach. You really just gotta look. Moving forward, I'm gonna be referencing my area to about 25 miles to the east of me. And on Saturday, we started catching these stingrays, or more correctly, skates on the beach. They had this brown tint to them with these black dots or spots all over them. That was very cool. There was also sea robins out there. Uh, that was cool to see. There's got to be bait attracting them, and I can only think that things are following the sea robins. Some guys were catching fluke on the open beaches, too. They're not in season, but it was cool to see. And a few nights later, during the dark hours of the night, I put on some big chunks, hoping, you know, hoping for a big guy in the striped suit, but I got pounded by something else, and I had some 50-pound Yozeri on, and this line got peeled. I mean, it looked like some big teeth were just scraping all along it. Could have been a bluefish, most likely a bluefish, but I'm not even going to say it. 
So I hope you guys are out there and being safe. And I know this report's long, but one last message. If you're driving on the beach at night and you see guys fishing in the water, turn your lights off or at least down. If I can do it, you can do it. Have a good day, guys. Be safe and get out there fishing. Take care. The Fisherman is now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. So now you can watch this broadcast and our other video content on the big screen. Just search for The Fisherman TV on any of those devices. From Staten Island, here is Mike Sentry. Past few days has been outstanding for TOG. Here is Ron and Chris. They have been hammering away at Jumbo TOGs, playing catch and release with tog up to 14 pounds. So outstanding catch, guys. On the Bluefish Report, here's Mark Joyce. He has been fighting Gated Blues. Very nice size, if I might add to that one. He's been getting them sporadically here and there. As the water warms up, you should be getting more Bluefish action to those that want Bluefish, of course. As you guys know, wire lead is a must on these bad boys. On the striped bass front, here's Brian Signoff. He has been using his extensive knowledge and skills in catching some really big bass. Here's one of his pictures, bass, 54 pounds, ca caught in the Raritan Bay, catch and release, of course. Outstanding, standing angler. On the uh, other fishermen, they have been chunking and lifelining many bass. Here's Matt and uh, Ron. Um, this action will continue to heat up from now on, guys. In the next couple of weeks, we're expecting water temperatures to rise pretty quickly. Uh, I believe they were saying up to the 80s in uh, second week of May. So this should really spruce up the uh, bass uh, spawning and the uh, fighting. So with that said guys, let me get out of here. It's a little nippy. Got some yard work to do. Stay well, stay safe, and uh, get your gear ready. More proof that some big choppers have moved into the area. Vito was fishing the Western Sound when this surprise guest showed up. He expected bass, but hooked into this 8 pound, 30 inch yellow eyed devil. He mentioned that the schoolie bite is slowed and maybe it's because the bluefish have chased them out of the area. If you'd like to be part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we're looking for social media savvy anglers for hyperlocal reporting from around the New York metro and Long Island area, especially from Montauk and the North Fork. So if you're a captain, tackle shop, or just an avid angler, contact me at libayrat at gmail.com. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. And of course, be a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine to be part of the Dreamboat and Kayak Clash contest. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and more information. And please support our correspondents by visiting their website and social media pages. Bay is here and let's be positive that the worst is behind us. I'm already looking forward to next week's fluke reports right here at thefisherman.com.